اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم افلا یتتبرون القرآن ولو کان من عند غیر اللہ لوجد فیہ اختلافا کثیرا صدق اللہ العظیم رب شرح لی صدری وجسر لی امری وحل العقدتا من لسان یفقہ قولی Respected viewers and listeners, the ayah which I have recited is from Surah An-Nisa, chapter 4, meaning the woman, verse number 82. Allah says, Afala yatatabburun al-Qur'an, why don't you see Qur'an, why don't you ponder at the book? Walau kana min indi ghairillah, had it been from anyone other than Allah, lawajadu fi ikhtalafan kasira, you would have found therein much discrepancy or contradiction this is the cornerstone or the main you know point of my whole lecture why this book i can boast this book is the only book on the surface of the earth which claims the divine revelations and giving you the challenges the challenge which is very vivid and open had it been for this book not from allah then you would have found therein much discrepancies meaning contradictions or things which are not true you see today i'm gonna give you an example of human anatomy human physiology human biological processes and from the verse which this quran is uh, making analogy or relating to words surah al fusilat chapter 40, uh, 41 verse number 57 sorry 53 where allah says that we will show you our signs on the horizon and within your own selves and then your heart will testify that this is al haq the truth seek ye the truth it shall set you free this is what jesus christ remarkably said in the bible allah says if this book is not from god then there will be so much so many contradictions on and on i'm picking one verse and i'm putting towards your attention to this verse there are thousand verse, verse, uh, verses regarding all these aspects before i was thinking to make two segments of the video one i will deal with the aspects of cosmology in the quran and then aspects of bio biology or human anatomy in quran but i think so the lecture will be so much vast and it will be a little bit you know too much to grasp so it's better to make only one part and later on inshallah in future near future i will deal with the other aspect so without wasting the time allah says that your heart will testify how by studying your own self by studying your own body your anatomy because the other part says see the horizon as i said horizon i will discuss later about cosmological events cosmic balance this astronomy and all these aspects the stars and the galactic all these galaxies are doing with one another the dynamics but today human anatomy i would like to propose some questions especially to atheistic world where they say that there is no god there is no you know intelligence which is uh, making all these things on and on divine intelligence and this is what i'm gonna explain and i'm gonna reason with them that if you have something alternative provide us you see from the dawn of the ages humans are being contemplating about themselves it's not today it's not by the advent of prophet muhammad peace but it's been before quran is only re diverting your attention to these notions that why are you asleep can't you see your own self look at your own body 
how is it working all these anatomy all these physiologies how they are working and interlinked with one another without any flaw flawless Allah says in the Quran that see the stars and the heavenly bodies you will not find a single flaw similarly if you have a flaw in the human body you will die you can't sustain life on this planet before going into the subject let me put some attention by killing Darwinism his natural selection this evolution you see there are two types of evolutions number one is the evolution which Darwin proposed that we came from apes or monkeys because of the few variances of our chromosomes we came from monkeys or human like etc there is so many theories in anthropology but the common one is even they put in the drawings that you know people are going this this direction then they become homo erectus their spine developed and later on homo sapiens this is new species or modern man intelligent man you see this is number one evolution number two second evolution is adaptability adapt adaptation towards the environment and this kind of evolution we believe and you know it is the irony of fate that most of the atheists they don't know that one of the attributes of allah is the evolver the one who evolves things as a creator this evolution we accept what is that adaptability if people are living in mountainous ranges their lungs capacity becomes bigger and bigger because the oxygen is there is a hard in the upper atmosphere then they have their lungs have to do extra work so similarly the people who are diving and you know living in these uh, rivers and all these kind of places mostly like a liquid in water watery places those people have different lungs capacity too bigger than that athletes so that's why they give you some exercises to how to make your lungs capacity larger than the human normal human so this is adaptability Allah evolves the humans if you don't have hair before now you grow hairs on your hands to protect from winters you know the cold breezes okay fine this is what the science tells us that humans have evolved yes because Allah is making this so there is not a big thing Allah says I do evolve evolution but not the evolution which Darwin proposed so first of all correct your ideology if we came from apes then why the apes and all those monkeys or gorillas whatever you want say orangutans they have same faces and humans all their faces are different why what is the link and remember that i taught human legacy this book history book and the first chapter was anthropology and related about all these things and they never mention in the book that we came from apes or monkeys what they mention that human like they said the thing was human like and there is missing links they are not sure about that so the origin of human race these science they don't know they don't know what is exact answer for the origin of human race we have the divine knowledge either you accept or it's up to you it's your problem not our problem you know the verses which i quoted you about surah fusilat if you read the three verses in the context allah says beautifully allah says in verse number i quoted you for chapter 41 verse number 53 if you read 52 53 54 allah says that ask these people what will happen if later on after your death you find that there is allah subhanallah what will happen then what would you do then there is no reverse so believe allah says there is no cost for you to believe you don't have to pay a bill or money or utility taxes that you have to believe in allah is free just to believe that there is one god he is the creator of the heavens and the earth and everything he's been created is the creature of allah not the creator himself because the creator cannot create another 
uncreated or creature or creator and then because say he is God. This God is from the beginning. He is from the beginning. His beginning is in an ending and his ending is in an beginning, in his beginning. So there is no stop. So atheistic people, evolution we believe, but not that one, that one. This kind of adaptability is no problem in humans. And this is what I'm going to refer to. You see, the medical doctors, they will verify what I'm going to tell you today. You see, Allah has created a system in our cellular data, in our cellular or cells. And what are those homeostasis? This is what you call the balancing of our cells function. If homeostasis is not right, your body will die. Your body will not go right. And this is what all cancers and all that stuff, you know, happen. They were made to protect us from all these kinds of, you know, fatal terminal diseases. So, you see now humans, we know that the most uh, common diseases nowadays we have is diabetes. And from there, I will give you one hint. And I'm going to ask these doctors who are atheistic concepts, skeptics and answer this question. The question I'm going to ask you, not the question you're going to frame yourself and give me the answer. You see, they tell us who these doctors that why you get diabetes there are two types of diabetes diabetes type 1 mostly you get inherited or you know by uh, by birth you have it is coming from your family in type 1 diabetes your pancreas the organs stop producing insulin which is kind of a hormone to uh, protect your body from the flow of sugar in your body so when stop producing insulin, what happened? Your, your internal organs are in jeopardy because they have to reduce the system of this values. There is a value. You have to reduce it. So what's the problem in type 2 diabetes? Take them both. In type 2 diabetes, what's the problem? That your body is becoming insulin, insulin resistant. This is insulin. The body is resisting. Now what body is resisting? Cells are resisting towards it. Membrane, there is a wall of the cells. They are stopping it. They're saying, stop, we cannot take this anymore because too much eating of carbs and sugary stuff. By the way, brain needs sugar. Otherwise, you cannot even blink your eyes because DNA, which is the protein you have in your body, these chemicals, this DNA, the acronym in the middle of the acronym that stands for sugar and sugar you need to have it but the problem is excessive sugar is killing us more than required and the lifestyle and all environmental adaptability not evolution of Darwin so what happens the question which I'm gonna ask Allah says watch your own body then your heart will testify that this is al haq what is the question? Think. You see, doctors tell us what happens in type 2 diabetes. Either your pancreas are producing less, what you call sugar, less uh, insulin, sorry. Your pancreas are producing less insulin. So what happens? Your body needs insulin to uh, digest or break down those carbs. So through the liver function. So what happens when this thing goes? That's the one number one case. Second case mostly that the cells are not taking that part into it. The part of insulin, there is a blockage in the cell membrane, the wall of the cells not taking it. Of course, when the cells are not taking, your, the cells, your blood are streaming through your veins and arteries and they are not benefiting your brain. So what happens? You need to take, to take pills orally or directly insulin shots. So your body can go, your cells can go into homeostasis. My question is, how the body knows that this insulin has to go to the cells? How? Don't take this question like easy. You're going to think that what kind of question is that? This is the question. How does this insulin 
know that it has to go into the cells how what thing is guiding them that's my question what is the guiding thing in it this is what you call divine intelligence if there is any other intelligence i would like to know which intelligence is telling you are telling me that this thing happens and there is a blockage because of too much resistivity they are tired the cells are resistant towards insulin now directly in your blood so it needs an outer help some kind of because of your lifestyle adaptability environment on and on my question how does it know that it has to go there directing who is directing if any doctor or giant of doctor has question answer I would like to say put in the comments that this thing is guiding it nothing is guiding they say there is no answer to this question the guiding is the guidance is from Allah the creator of the heavens and the earth and Allah says that we have created insan and insan is the most complex machine and this complex machine if you see your own self you will come towards Allah and there are thousands of things where the body is doing in homeostasis your cells you're playing the role internally but answer are not there so this is the question who is guiding that thing that it has to go to the cell membrane to the wall of the cells to give the energy